And I want to move into part two of this conversation, really the company story, which is what we do and how we do it. Uh, so Robert Kiyosaki has been uh, you know, making the cash flow argument for decades. Robert Kiyosaki is the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which, by the way, is it's actually the best-selling finance book of all time. Um, and uh, he's been making the cash flow argument for decades. And uh, he says that the definition, catch this now, Robert says that the definition of an asset is something that puts cash in your pocket. The definition of an asset is something that puts cash in your pocket. In, in, in other words, a true asset is one that cash flows. Right? So, and hey, real estate is about as good as it gets on that front. And so what we've done is we've chosen to specialize, we as a company have chosen to specialize primarily in the housing sector. Uh, so real estate, housing, and we like workforce housing. So our the real estate we look for is generally not really at the high end of the market, and it's not at the low end of the market. We look for apartment buildings and, and multifamily housing, housing that is um, generally in that middle income uh, bracket. We think it's a very defensive um, uh, play from a um, from a risk standpoint, we think it's very a very secure place. So we like workforce housing. So specifically, we like market rate housing. That means what that means is it's non subsidized, um, and so generally we're not into uh, the the, um, the the lower lowest income levels uh, where you know the rents come uh, exclusively or primarily from the government. We're not in that market. Uh, we did try that early on, and we found that if people didn't have skin in the game, uh, they didn't care as much. And so we've migrated more to the market rate. Now, I also would say is it's not the very top of the market um, because none of our properties have uh, you know granite countertops or marble floors or underground parking you know so we're we're in that middle income workforce housing and and the uh, other thing is from a geographic area we have worked to stay in like outstate regional hubs in the the Midwest uh, Midwest is uh, you know generally more stable and conservative. Uh, you know, there's certainly some pockets of uh, that, that that's not the case in in some of larger cities. But in these outstate regional hubs, uh, we have found that, you know, it's very stable, it's very conservative, and we fit well in that market. So what we do is we look for properties that um, were probably built in the 1970s or 80s. Uh, so they're a bit tired uh, meaning that there might be some improvements that need to be made, maybe as original roofs or original parking lots or, you know, w original windows or heating and cooling systems. And so they kind of, they, they're, they're, they've be fallen possibly in a little bit of disrepair. Um, they're maybe undermanaged because they've, you know, the owners live out of state or maybe it's a, um, maybe it's a, an estate that, you know, some heirs inherited it and, you know, they're just, um, you know, kind of been collecting rent checks and the property has begun to decline. Tenant quality has declined. Uh, so, you know, there's lower income. Many times there's higher expenses. Th that might sound like a terrible property to you, but that's a wonderful property from our perspective. And we love to find those kinds of opportunities. And I say it's an opportunity because there's really a three-year or a three-phased plan that we um, embark on when we acquire a property like that. In year one or phase one, we rehab the property. So we're going to do all of the improvements that need to be done. And then we're going to reposition the management. Uh, what that means is, is that we replace the existing management with our own manager. And uh, we, we self-manage all of our properties. 
And, uh, and so we replace existing management with, uh, with new management. We also will, you know, remove some tenants, not all the tenants, but there's a, a, a small percentage of tenants that we generally move out because we want to get rid of the, the drug dealing tenants and the people that are, uh, that are, are causing the property to possibly have a bad or a poor, a below par uh, reputation. And because what we want to do is we want to put families back in and we want to attract families. So we put, you know, new playgrounds in for kids and new laundry and vending and, and, you know, new LED lighting, you know, bright lighting in the hallways and the parking lots. And, you know, we believe light casts out darkness in more ways than one. And so that's kind of all encompassed. All those things are encompassed in year one where we rehab and we reposition the management. Phase two, which is year two, we're gonna, we're gonna now that we made all these changes, we're gonna start to stabilize the finances. Um, that just means that the, the expenses come down, the income comes up, the, the net operating income, kind of the value, uh, that the, the profit that's being kicked off that property starts to increase. And that's very important that that happens in year two, because in year three, we're going to refinance the property. Now that it's making more money, it means it's worth more money. And so now we go to get a conventional loan on that, you know, from Freddie or Fannie or HUD or something like that, where we're going to get some conventional financing because we want to hold the property a long time. But it just takes us about three years to be able to do that whole process. And so as we get into, well, and I'm, I'm cycling back to why this is an illiquid investment, why that matters, why is ours three years? So our an investment with 3D money since the time we started has always been a three-year investment. Not two, not one, not five, not 10. Right? It's a three-year investment. The reason it's three years is just because we've got, it takes us three years to do this. And uh, so we pay 6% interest uh, to the investor. And uh, some of the, you know, kind of the details or the nuances is, is that we are set up so that we can take qualified money, which would be IRA money. So if you have uh, money from a previous employer or a self-directed IRA money or Roth money, uh, we, can, uh, we, we can help you invest that money. And we can also take what's called non-qualified, which is just checkbook money. Right, it's money that you uh, you might have that is not subject to a um, an IRA uh, rules and requirements, and so um, it, it's really an excellent. This is an excellent investment. It's like a a CD alternative. Uh, it, it, it's a fixed income alternative, a bond alternative, and you know when you think about it that way, you know that with with this. Uh, uh, central banks across the globe printing money like drunken sailors. Um, it, you know, money, we're in this strange time in humans' history when money isn't worth much. I mean, the use of money is not worth much, uh, meaning that there's not much interest that's being paid by uh, traditional financial institutions on, the, uh, on those types of investments. And so this is a way that you can uh, get a very respectable rate of return. I mean, where are you going to find 6% in a bond or a CD or a fixed income um, uh, uh, municipal bond or something like that? They're just not paying 6%. So it's a very competitive return. It's backed by cash flowing real estate. And um, uh, yeah, and so we have about currently right now, what our portfolio looks like, we have um, uh, right at about a thousand multifamily units, a uh, thousand rental units. And um, we have about uh, our fund, our real, our, our 3D money fund is about $50 million. Um, and uh, of people that have put that in, we've never missed an interest payment, um, never uh, missed any deadlines. And so we're very proud of our, 
uh, of our track record. We're very fa- proud of our, our history. And so that's kind of the, the summary of the company story, what we do and how we do it. So I kind of like to wrap up this section by uh, just, you know, maybe making a, a, a couple other comments. You know, may, the, the main street uh, financial media's, the financial media's mission um, is to promote and protect Wall Street. Um, and the paper and their paper asset casinos <laughs> uh, to uh, put frame it one way. Um, you know, Wall Street, Wall Street's not blue or red. Um, Wall Street is green, right? They're about the money. And, you know, sure, Wall Street might discuss as it relates to real estate, they might they might discuss home builder stocks and REITs and, and hedge funds as as vehicles to funnel money through Wall Street into real estate. But I got to tell you, there are layers of limousines and penthouses and private jets and big bonuses between that stand between individual investors and on, on Main Street and the Main Street real estate that, that's actually producing the profits. Um, you know, it can seem to me, and I'm sure to you also, that there's a whole lot of skimming going on, right, in that deal. And at 3D Money, we think that a more direct model is better, where Main Street invests directly in Main Street. Um, you know, let's face it, when Wall Street works on paper, it feels good and it seems easy. Uh, but when it doesn't work, it can fall apart fast. And there's no plan B, right? Well, I, I guess except maybe the Fed. Um, so as long as our debt-fueled system exists, uh, real estate is arguably the best tool. Um, remember that real estate serves an essential human need, right? As housing serves an essential human need. So unless private property rights are abolished or Uncle Sam gives everybody a free house, which, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe that's possible. Um, but assuming that doesn't happen, real estate will be with us for a long time. And, you know, so our current times, they're nerve wracking. I understand that. Uh, but the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, I got to tell you, it's likely sitting on a piece of real estate. Um, So our trademark tagline is, uh, um, we've got your six, Uh, you know, 6% and we've got your six and we'd love to talk more with you about it.